my name is Gary Davis. I'm with the Media and Entertainment Group at Autodesk, and we're here at SIGGRAPH at the Box booth, and we're specifically focused on um, a couple of different things here. We're looking at the Render Pro render machines for offlining uh, network rendering, in this case, Autodesk Backburner, running 3ds Max and Metal Ray. And we're also using a GPU board set inside of this workstation for doing GPU hardware accelerated rendering. Why? Uh... Xeons versus uh, NVIDIA graphics card, what's the pros and cons? Well, and that's a good those? question. The diff well, Xeons are for software rendering or ray tracing and things like metal ray, okay? So in the case of 3ds Max, as an example, we've got several different rendering engines. The Scanline Renderer and metal ray are both software, ray tra uh, software renderers, so that, that something like this is going to be useful. We also have a Quicksilver renderer and another one called iRay, which this scene is set up for. And this one is taking advantage of the GPU. So this one, and now I'll switch kind of gears and talk a little, not about these, but about the graphics cards that are in this machine are NVIDIA, it's a Quadro 6000 and a Tesla 2075. And those two boards combined have been branded with marketing to speak called Maximus by NVIDIA. So this Maximus board set is what's in this machine. And that gives me this really high inter interactive ability to work. And I also have the ability to do interactive rendering called Active Shade. Uh, let me bring that up. And now this is rendering, I've, and this is, you might wanna, I don't know if you can see this, you might wanna even zoom in on this. Um, <laughs> this, I've set this up to use a thing called Active Shade. And this window right now is being, it's saying just continue, just keep ray tracing keep going, I'm, don't ever finish, just keep getting progressively better. But I've only told this window to use one of the graphics cards in this machine, which is the Tesla, and I've only so told uh, this mode to use four of the eight cores in this machine. So I have eight cores, but only four of them are working right now. So I've said, you take half the horsepower, I want the other half for me. And that gives me the ability to work in a very interactive mode, and I'm using the Quadro, but this one's, so I'm using this card, and the other card is being used to render that view. And I'm doing real-time ray tracing with depth of field, glossy reflections. I mean, crazy, you know, like <laughs> a crazy amount of work in there. And then once I like this and I adjust my lighting and I get things the way that I like, let me put that back. I can get that right how I want it and say, okay, stop what you're doing. I like where we're headed. Switch over to a production render mode. Now I want you to use all the graphics cards. I want you to use all the processing of this machine and render it at full resolution. And now I've just locked up every video card, every CPU, everything is rendering on this. And it's a 720p HD frame with depth of field and glossy reflections. And it's just like firing off. I mean, you can see this has only been a few seconds. That type of thing with software only ray tracing would, would potentially take like a half an hour or something like that. So it's a, it depends on the rendering engine that you're using, GPU versus CPU. Um, I like to work in a hybrid pipeline. Sometimes I'm, I'm using the workstation's GPUs to help me build the scene. And then when I'm ready to full, finally render the thing, I send it off and for software ray tracing. It depends on, it's just to, different strokes for different folks. I, I mean, I use this board set right here, and it's, I mean, I laughed the first time I ever did this because it was such an impact on render time. And, and, that, and to just kind of reiterate, when, it, when you go back to this mode called Active Shade, to be able to work interactively and have a full ray traced view like that, you know, the, the fidelity of the viewports is one thing, and it's pretty, it's giving me a pretty good idea. It's even doing depth of field in the viewports now, and we're proud of that. But the fact that that is the, not like the rendered view, that is a rendered view. So to, to be able to work and move around my scene and quickly see what the render is going to be, that's where the GPU can come in. So in, in the, at the 10,000 foot level, it kind of depends on which renderer you're using, what you're doing. Are you doing both? Do you want to find a hybrid of something like this where you have nice GPUs and nice CPUs? But that, that whole setup right there, just that setup is, uh, and let me check, with, I'm going back to that Q monitor. These three machines are uh, dual processor, eight core multi-threaded, so they're 32 cores, 32 virtual CPUs each, so that's 96 right there, and plus another eight, so we're at 104. 104 cores, you know, right there. 